incel being these weirdo loner men uh, who are you know, despicable in many ways. Is that you? Are you the intellectual hero to these people? Sure. Why not? You know, um, people have been after me for a long time by, because I've been speaking to disaffected young men. You know, what a terrible thing to do that is. I thought the marginalized were supposed to have a voice. It's making you emotional to talk about it. Well, God, you know. It's very difficult to understand how demoralized people are. And certainly many young men are in that category. And you get these casual insults, these, these incels. What does it mean? It's like, well, these men, they're, they don't know how to make themselves attractive to women who are very picky and good for them. Women, like, be picky. That's, that's your gift, man. Demand high standards from your men. Fair enough. But all these men who are alienated, it's like they're lonesome and, and, and they don't know what to do. And everyone piles abuse on them. It's really something to see. Constantly. How many people are dying for a lack of an encouraging word? Mm. And how easy it is to provide that if you're careful. You know, give credit where credit is due. And to say, you're a net force for good if you want to be. Do you believe you're a net force for good? Net? Yes. In all the details? Probably not. You know, no one's perfect. Uh, no, do not be vulnerable with women. I, I, I but you've, never been, you've never been in love. You want to do the example? <laughs> women are not built to handle masculine problems. We are being vulnerable with a woman is some of the worst advice that modern day women give to men. Because if I sit there and I cry to you, oh my god, my life is hard, blah 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 blah. You might sit there and console me for a bit, but deep down you're like, you fuck. And you're no, gonna go and that find is someone. So not true. I know. Uh, crying for you. Vulnerability is be so human. powerful. Again, this is a common example of women saying one thing, but doing another. They're saying this right now because it's politically correct to say, you can cry to me, you can be vulnerable to me, etc. But deep down, if your man came to you and was crying on your shoulder saying, I don't know what's going on, her I vagina's would be gonna, for him. can me? I finish? Can I finish? If her vagina's gonna dry up, she ain't gonna wanna fuck with him anymore, and she's gonna look for a stronger, more capable man, because women are designed to look for security. Just hey man, I can't tell you how many times we've brought girls on the show with yep. their own, they tell us on air, I, one time my boyfriend cried in front of me and I never looked at him the same. The thing is, is that women do not handle masculine problems. Men and women live different realities. Women are not equipped to handle masculine problems. You need to go to your guys and tell them you have issues. You want to cry, cry to them. You have problems you want to talk out, talk it out with them. Because you cannot show that you're soft or weak in front of your woman. Because even though women say, oh, well, no, I'm capable of being empathetic. I can understand your struggle, blah, blah, blah. They really don't. Because when a man cries in front of a woman, it's going to incite a natural reaction of, repuls of, of re uh, revulsion. Because men that cry and are soft are not attractive. And women are hardwired to look for security. This is why guys that are soft and lose frame, mm -hmm. the girl leaves them and goes to another guy that knows what's going on. And it's a very, um, how do I say this? It's a, it's a biological response. You know what I'm saying? Like w women are just designed to look for men that are strong. So we tell guys, don't even get, open up Pandora's box and get sensitive around your girl. So don't even don't show do it. it. It amazed me that this is what I see on Twitter. This is what I see around the world. A man comes to a space and try to be vulnerable and try to express his feeling towards everyone and try to say, articulate exactly how he felt. Then instead, the whole world is pretty much laughing at him. Some of these guys that are uh, pretty much claiming to be um, pretty much oppressed and everything like that are laughing at this guy, which is so crazy to me in a sense. Now you guys wonder why men try not to open up because of this rhetoric that we're going to be made fun of. We're going to be laughed at. We're not going to be taken serious. So there's a lot of time that 
when a guy like Jordan Peterson comes along, we tend to gravitate towards him because he's speaking on our behalf. Some men don't have the choice to be able to speak. Some men don't have the option to be able to speak and they don't have nowhere to go. So you wonder why Jordan Peterson and garnered so many, so many men towards him. You see that, you see the influence, you see the impact on it. I do not believe in his politics. Don't get me wrong. But some of his philosophy, some of his thinking is something that literally drawn me towards him. One of the things is, is the aspect of responsibility. And for so long when I was growing up, I tried to blame everybody else. I tried to point the finger at somebody else. I did not take the time to f me personally saying, no, I need to take responsibility. I need to do this. So. When a guy like that comes and broke down in tears and he's in front of national TV, we as a people laughed at his face. We laughed at him. We made fun of him. It's like you're not taking man's problem serious. There's a lot of men out there that don't have someone to be speaking up for them. There's a lot of men out there that don't have nobody at all. And you wonder why the self-deletion rate for men is so much higher. You wonder why like the dating pool is starting to change for men. You're wondering why a lot of men are not also getting married. There's so many other variations, but we're we, they're still part of us as a man. As growing up as a man, you tell us, you know, you need to man up, you know. Why are you crying? Why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? The act of being vulnerable is not it's not a luxury for us. It's not something that we were trained to do. It's not something that we were taught to do because the world is telling us that as a man, you need to be responsible. You need to act up. You need to be tough and you need to be able to handle any situation. So expressing one's emotion is something that's it's hard to do as a man. And even when you do it, is this is a sense that like you still get make fun of or you still get brought down on or you don't get taken seriously is that like, why are you being like this why are you being overly emotion why are you being this why are you being that and yes i've had that i've had that there's a moment where i showed my i showed my emotion and it scared the person to a point where that person separated from me there is there is that aspect of it so i've learned to wear my sleeve even longer I've learned to cover those scars. I've learned to shelter my thought to myself and properly be able to articulate my own thought process instead of lashing out. I cannot act on my emotion as much as people think or they want me to. Also, it's crazy because as a man, if you do that, it comes off as aggressive or as an aggression and you don't want to do that. So for, for me to sit here and watch people going after a man that's coming on national tv and crying you know bawling his eyes out and saying this for men speaking on men behalf pull up his sleeve and actually actually became vulnerable and you guys laughed at it the same group of people that's always talking about them being marginalized and oppressed are the one laughing at him now why? Because he's like saying it's toxic and masculinity and everything like that in that nature. The man is just telling you to take responsibility, take responsibility for your life. As a man, it's like, OK, yeah, you know, get a job, move out, clean your room, you know, do any take care of yourself, do everything that you need to do. Fix yourself first before you can fix anybody. Even Jordan Peterson said, you know, you got to clean your room because you can't make any changes out in the world if you can't even clean your room. So it's just to me, I, I feel I feel I feel very sad uh, in, in a sense. I feel very empathy for him because I know what he's going through. I can see it. You know, over the years, this guy has been fighting for the same thing. And imagine over the years, someone is calling you the same name over and over, calling you this, calling you that, just being very nasty towards you. And you seeing those around you, no matter how many armor you, you put up, eventually those armors will crumble. Eventually everything will goes down. 
and you will not be who you are anymore because you have fight so many the battle has been long i've been listening to jordan peterson for about five years now and i can tell you what for five years this guy has been fighting for the same thing and it's insane how one man can do that for that long you know especially in the age of uh, social media where people can blast you and the information is out there even more faster people can see it and so everyone can take on to twitter facebook whatever youtube and stuff and just say some of the most foul thing to you and stuff it will come back to you eventually or when you go to public speaking and somebody is out there either protesting saying something foul to you or just being very nasty towards you while you're calm and trying to educate and try to speak properly but they're not giving you a chance to talk so instead you guys are oppressing the man and which is something you guys should not be doing because you guys should know how it feels to be oppressed but yet here we are the man's crying and then you guys are doing that i'm just tired of people uh you know the false narrative of this guy man you guys need to do better man i'll see y'all later